It's not very often that a brand new game leaves me completely speechless. This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel, my name is Matt, and welcome to Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharged. For those who don't know, uh, it is the sequel by Milestone that uh, they had their first game in the Hot Wheels series in 2021, and it was, in my mind, a complete diamond in the rough, and they have continued on that success and released a sequel just yesterday so i am very excited to be playing it and today i wanted to, to kind of test how the game runs on steam deck and you'll find it incredibly surprising so let's start out by going to settings and then we'll go to video now on startup it auto sets to 1280 by 800. Um, I think vertical sync was off. FSR 1.0 was off. A uh, cap of 60. But then here's the interesting part. It's auto sets to custom, but anti-aliasing is all the way up. Texture is all the way up. anti anti filtering is all the way up. Everything's all the way up. And if I recall playing on the PC version, I think some of these settings that are up on high or very high can actually go to ultra but it's like capped off at high which is interesting but it's interesting to see that it's all at high on a steam deck so we're like okay so let's do a quick restart i am yes this is a camcorder looking at steam deck so bear with me on this but i mean it just looks absolutely fantastic and the reason why i'm putting the camcorder in front of a steam deck for today is we are testing three different main settings on battery mode this isn't even plugged in this is on battery so yes again i'll apologize for uh the poor quality video but if you can look past that, performance is incredibly stable for a game that was just released yesterday. And in my mind, this is exactly what we needed in 2023 because it is 2023 has given us all sorts of games that have been unoptimized, pushed out the door way before they're ready. And even just last week with Forza Motorsport, I am so frustrated with that game, trying to get it to work on Steam Deck. I deleted Windows, I got Windows back on it, and Steam Deck really isn't meant for dual boot, so I had to deal with all that. And it still runs meh. Like, the textures still go missing, and it's just... And Turn 10 have no, absolutely zero urgency on getting the Steam Deck version to work because they're trying to get the game to work. So, enough about Forza like milestone has done an amazing job like holy crap they've done an amazing job optimizing this game for steam deck for pc for i mean it's out on playstation 4 and 5 it's on pretty much every xbox it's on nintendo switch and i was going to do compare and contrast with the switch version as well i haven't got that yet but stay tuned for that and the performance speaks for itself don't mind my driving by the way the performance here, like, we might have had a frame drop. It has been at a steady 60 frames. GPU has been, yes, in the high 80s to low 90%. CPU has been anywhere from the high 20s to the low 40s. So that one's kind of all over the place. And on battery... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a struggle bus. It's We've got, at 66%, we've got maybe an hour of play left. So it's it's pushing the Steam Deck a little bit there. But yeah, it's just... Wow. Just wow. <laughs> so let us 
go back. We'll do a quick restart. So that was with FSR off. And the reason why I did that separately is because I wanted to show the performance gains that you get with an AI upscaler. This is kind of the biggest selling point that I can give to anybody right now in you describing, you know, an AI upscaler because we're going to go to ultra quality, not quality, not balance, not performance or ultra performance or whatnot, ultra quality, change nothing else. And this blew me away. It really did. So immediately our GPU drops 10%. And the CPU is close-ish to where it is. It's averaging more in the low 30s than it was in the mid 30s. Immediately, you'll notice the battery life did, in fact, go up. Because it's not being pushed as hard anymore, which I... Oh, God. Help me. There we go. <laughs> and as you can tell, the battery life has gone up because it's just not being pushed as hard. And I... I never thought coming into seeing like the AI upscalers that this is what it was capable of. It's able to push capped 60, basically identical performance to what we we're just doing on everything all the way up. And we're saving performance. So yeah, I just how well optimized this game is especially for Steam Deck. Like, my jaw is on the floor right now. This props words do. Milestone has done an incredible job, and I will not shut up about it <laughs> because there have been so many games released recently that have just not. So, so I think the point's been made for FSR capped 60. Now, changing nothing else, once again, we can go up to a frame limit of 144, which I have yet to test on my laptop because it does have a high refresh rate screen. But we're just going to throw it all the way up. Then we go over here. Refresh rate can't go any higher than 60, but the frame rate limit is off. So this is everything all the way up. Uncapped. FSR. VSync off. I should make mention. VSync off. So on the Steam Deck, this is what's crazy to me. On the Steam Deck, yes, our battery life is going through the floor as we speak. The GPU is being pushed almost to the very top of its limits. CPU is being pushed very aggressively as well. My driving ability is still garbage. But take a look at those frames. I want to say if you had a variable refresh rate monitor or screen, this would look amazing because we are already in the high 80s, the low 90s of a frame a second. So the only issue that I've been having here is that it is variable. It's just had a hundred there. We're now over a hundred <laughs> and this is on a steam deck. Normally, the games that you expect to see that kind of level of performance would be like, I don't know, Ori and the Blind Forest or like, in general, like Undertale. It's like really well optimized indie games. And would we consider this indie? I don't know. I think Milestone is more AAA, I suppose. But to have these le this level of performance again it's just staggering so as far as my personal choice for gameplay experience I like having vSync on normally because games are not well optimized enough that when vSync is off you have a whole host of screen tearing uh, with this vSync being off I actually haven't noticed any screen tearing at all. Which again is incredibly impressive. 
So V-Sync can or cannot be on or off. It doesn't really matter in my mind. But I would definitely recommend having SFSR 1.0 on. And my personal preference is I would just cap it at 60 because the refresh rate can't go any higher than that. If you have a high refresh rate monitor you want to plug the Steam Deck into, sure. Do I think it's necessary? Absolutely not. <laughs> but you can if you want to. So, yeah, like I was saying, in the state of games in 2023 with primarily optimization with Steam Deck, it's not good at all. This shows us there is hope. <laughs> there is definitive hope. I'll just grab this guy here. So, no, I'm just... This is awesome, and I will not stop giving Milestone praise because whenever I've had friends come over for the first time and, and be like, hey, what's the Steam Deck? I would throw them Hot Wheels Unleashed, the first game, and say, have fun. And that game, even still, was incredibly well optimized. Anything that Milestone has produced, at least in the Hot Wheels franchise, has been gold. And it's a well-needed thing in 2023. So I'm superbly happy. This is a game that I'm going to be playing so much. I'm going to be getting so many hours out of this. And Milestone deserves all the praise for this and yes uh, everybody's going to be a little bit upset with you know the paid dlc and the extremely expensive season passes and all the rest of it as you can tell i paid extra money for 20 mil and the accelerators and there's going to be an accelerators expansion pack which coming from my childhood i these are the developers that you give them that extra money to and say hey you guys did amazing the game is really well optimized I'm going to say it's not without faults because whenever I've started this and gotten into the settings sometimes the back blue screen backdrop is missing so then you have white text and a white background so that's not necessarily great but I mean to be a single day old at this point and to have most of these bugs completely figured out is spectacular so apart from that i really don't have anything much else to say i mean we can do some more compare and contrasts with the different settings but i mean all in all no matter what you pick it's going to be amazing and i didn't have to even adjust the bottom setting so everything's still on like ultra or very high or high you don't need to bring it down to low. I almost kind of want to bring everything down to like medium and see how high we can get that frame rate to go because that would be awesome. But again, props, props to Milestone. Great game. I'm loving this already. So again, if you enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I don't know. We've got some more games coming out. So stay tuned for that. I'll most likely do some performance testing on Steam Deck because that's just the thing that I do when it comes to racing games. Um, and stay tuned because allegedly, allegedly, Polyphony Digital is working on its biggest update for Gran Turismo 7 yet. And I think it's a long time coming. They've had a lot of patches recently that have been mediocre at best and just nothing there. So I'm excited to see what a large update, what their biggest update looks like. So stay tuned for all of that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.